Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. I'm your reader, Lloyd Wharton, aka DJ L Dub. Today's reading is taken from the book of 2 Chronicles, chapters 4 through 6. Our scheduled reading follows the Bridges for Peace, Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. So let's begin. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your mercy and your grace this day. We thank you that you lead us into all truth. You are the author and the finisher of our faith. And we just thank you for this word that we hear on today, that we just not be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. And we just thank you for you just being uh, all that you are to us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we can apply this and uh, just continue to just be strong in the faith. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's go. Second Chronicles chapter 4. Moreover, he made a bronze altar, 20 cubits in its length, 20 cubits its width, and 10 cubits its height. Then he made the sea of cast bronze, 10 cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. Its height was 5 cubits, and a line of 30 cubits measured its circumference. And under it was like the likeness of oxen circling all around, 10 to a cubit, all the way around the sea. The oxen were cast in two rows when it was cast. It stood on 12 oxen, three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. The sea was set upon them, and all their back parts pointed inward. It was a handbreadth thick, and its brim was shaped like the brim of a cup, like a lily blossom. It contained 3,000 baths. He also made 10 lavers, and put five on the right side and five on the left to wash in them. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering, they could wash in them, but the sea was for the priest to wash in. And he made them 10 lampstands of gold according to their design and set them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. He also made 10 tables and placed them in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made 100 bowls of gold. Furthermore, he made the court of the priest, and the great court and the doors for the court, and he overlaid these doors with bronze, and he set the sea on the right side toward the southeast. Then Huram made the pots and the shovels and the bowls. So Huram finished doing the work that he was to do for King Solomon for the house of God. The two pillars and the bowl-shaped capitals that were on the top of two pillars, the two networks covering the bowl the two bowl-shaped capitals, which were on top of the pillars, 400 pomegranates uh, for the network, two rows of pomegranates for each network, the cover, the two bowl-shaped capitals that were on the pillars. He also made carts and labors on the carts, one sea and 12 oxen under it. Also the pots, the shovels, the forks, and all their articles, Hiram, his master craftsman, made the burnished a bronze for King Solomon for the house of the Lord. In the plain of Jordan, the king had them cast in clay molds between Succoth and Zerida. And Solomon had all these articles made in such abundance that the weight of the bronze was not determined. Thus Solomon had all the furnishings made for the house of God, the altar of gold and the tables on which was the showbread, the lampstands with their lamps of pure gold, to burn with the prescribed manner in front of the inner sanctuary. With the flowers and the lamps and the wick trimmers of gold, of purest gold. The trimmers, the bowls, the ladles, and the censers of pure gold. As for the entry of the sanctuary, its inner doors to the most holy place, and the doors from the main hall of the temple were gold. Second Chronicles chapter five. So all the work that Solomon had done for the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things which his father David had dedicated, the silver and the gold and all the furnishings, and put them in the treasuries of the house of God. Now Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief fathers of the children of Israel in Jerusalem, that they might bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord up from the city of David, which is Zion. Therefore, all the men of Israel assembled with the king of the feast, which is in the seventh month. So all the elders of Israel came, and the Levites took up the ark. Then they brought up the ark, the tabernacle of the meeting, and all the holy furnishings that were in the tabernacle. The priests and the Levites brought them up. Also King Solomon, all the congregation of Israel, 
who were assembled with them before the ark, were sacrificing sheep and oxen that could not be counted or numbered for a multitude. Then the priests brought up the ark at the covenant of the Lord to its place, into the inner sanctuary of the temple, to the most holy place, under the wings of the cherubim. For the cherubim spread their wings over the place of the ark, and the cherubim overshadowed the ark and its poles. The poles extended so that the ends of the poles of the ark could be seen from the holy place, in front of the inner sanctuary, but they could not be seen from outside. And they were there to this day. Nothing was in the ark except for the two tablets which Moses put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel when they had come out of Egypt. And it came to pass, when the priests came out of the most holy place, for all the priests who were present had sanctified themselves without keeping to their divisions. And the Levites, who were the singers, all those Asaph and Hermon and Jared, Jeduthun, with the sons and their brethren, stood at the east end of the altar, clothed in white linen, having cymbals, string instruments, and harps, and with them one hundred and twenty priests sounding their trumpets. Indeed, it came to pass. When the trumpeters and the singers were as one, to make a sound to be heard praising and thanking the Lord, and when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and the cymbals and the instruments of the music, they praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, his mercies endure forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud, so the priests could not continue ministering because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. Second Chronicles chapter 6 Then Solomon spoke, The Lord said he would dwell in the dark cloud, and I surely built you an exalted house, and a place for you to dwell in forever. Then the king turned around and blessed the whole assembly of Israel, while at the assembly of Israel was standing. And he said, Blessed be the Lord of God of Israel, who has filled with his hands what he spoke with his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought my people out of the land of Egypt, I have chosen no city from any tribe of Israel in which to build a house, that my name might be there, nor did I choose any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Yet I have chosen Jerusalem, that my name may be there, and I have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of my father David to build a temple for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father David, whereas it was in your heart to build a temple for my name, you did well in what was in your heart. Nevertheless, you shall not build a temple for your son who will come from your body. He shall build the temple for my name. So the Lord has fulfilled his word, which he spoke. And I have filled the position of my father David and sit on the throne of Israel as the Lord promised. And I have built the temple for that, for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And there I have put the ark in which is the covenant of the Lord, where he made with the children of Israel. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of all the assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. For Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the midst of the court, and he stood on it, knelt down on his knees before all the assembly of Israel, and spread out his hands towards heaven. And he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God in heaven or on earth like you, who keep your covenant and your mercy with your servants who walk before you with all their hearts. You have kept what you have promised your servant David, my father. You have spoken with your mouth and fulfilled it with your hand, as it is today. Therefore, Lord God of Israel, now keep what you have promised your servant David, my father, saying, You shall not fail to have a man sit before me on the throne of Israel. Only with your sons take heed to their way, that they walk in my law as you have walked before me. And now, O Lord God of Israel, let your word come true, which you have spoken to your servant David. But will God indeed dwell with the men on earth? Behold, heaven and, earth and the heavens of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built. Yet regard the prayer of your servant and his supplication, O Lord my God. And listen to the cry and the prayer which your servant is praying before you, that your eyes may be open toward the temple day and night, toward the place where 
you say you will put your name that you may hear the prayer which your servant makes towards this place. And may you hear the supplications of your servant and your people Israel. When they pray towards this place, hear from heaven your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive. If anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear from heaven and act and judge your servants, bringing retribution on the wicked or bringing his way on his head and justifying the righteous by giving them according to his righteousness. Or if your people Israel are defeated before any enemy because they have sinned against you, and return to confess your name, and pray and make supplication before you in this temple, then hear from heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel, and bring them back to the land which you gave them and their fathers. When the heavens are shut up, and there is no rain because of they have sinned against you, when they pray toward this place and confess your name, and turn, on, turn from their sin because you afflict them, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel, that you may teach them the good way in which they should walk and send rain on your land, which you have given to your people as an inheritance. When there is famine in the land, pestilence or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, when their enemy besieges them in the land of their cities, whenever a plague or whatever sickness there is, whatever prayer, whatever supplication is made by anyone or by all your people Israel, when each one knows his own burden and his own grief and spreads out his hands from his temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and forgive, and forgive uh, to everyone according to his ways, whose heart you know, for you alone know the hearts of the sons of men, that they may fear you to walk in your ways as long as they live in the land which you gave your fathers. Moreover, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name and your mighty hand and your outstretched arm. When they come and pray in this temple, then hear from heaven your dwelling place and do according to all for which the foreigner calls to you, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you, as do your people, that they may know that this temple which I have built is called by your name. When your people go out to battle against their enemies, wherever you said look, and when they pray to you towards this city, which you have chosen in the temple, which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayers and their supplication and maintain their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin, and you become angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, and they take, from them, they take them captive to a land far or near. Yet when they come to themselves in the land which they have carried captive and repent and make supplications to you in the land of their captivity, saying, We have sinned, we have done wrong, and have committed wickedness. And when they return to you with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their captivity, where they have been carried captive and pray toward their land which you gave to their fathers, the city which you have chosen and toward the temple which I have built for your name, then hear from heaven your dwelling place, their prayer and their supplications, and maintain their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open and let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now, therefore, arise, O Lord, God, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation and let your saints rejoice in goodness. O oh Lord God, do not turn away the face of your anointed. Remember the mercies of your servant, David. This has been the reading of the word. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord God, for this day. This is the day you've created. We thank you, Lord God, for your blessing. Thank you for showing us, Lord God, the obedience of your people who just set their mind to do your will. Thank you, Lord God, that your promises are sure. We no longer have to deal with temples or sacrifices or offerings. Jesus Christ became the ultimate sacrifice for us, and he dwells on the inside of those who believe in him. Thank you that we can do all things through Christ this day. We thank you that we can go forth and we have victory because of you. We repent of anything not of you, and we just thank you that you deliver us from the evil one. May we go forth empowered to do 
great things because of what you've done on the cross. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is Lloyd Wharton. God bless.